Mr. President, I am pleased to participate in this joint debate in the General Assembly today on peace building. I would like to warmly congratulate Bangladesh for their chairing of the Peace Building Commission since February and thank Egypt for their contribution to PBC initiatives. The world today has come to better grasp the complex and interlinked facets of peace building. The global perspective on addressing conflicts has undergone a paradigmatic shift from resolution, reconciliation and recovery to prevention and reconstruction, thereby making peace building a critical pillar in our collective response to conflict situations. India, as one of the leading troop and police contributing countries to UN peacekeeping missions, has been an active member of the PBC since its inception. As we speak, we have more than 5,500 personnel deployed across nine missions, serving under the blue flag, 177 gallant Indian soldiers have made the supreme sacrifice, the largest number amongst the troop contributing and police contributing countries. Mr. President, we believe that the PBC and the PBF need enhanced support and increased focus from member states in fulfilling their mandate. In this context, let me present the following submissions. One, we continue to underscore the importance of the cardinal principle of inclusivity in order to advance national peace building objectives. Thus, an exclusively donor-driven approach to peace building would not be the most prudent path to follow. Two, the ongoing discourse on enhanced financial support for peace building activities through sources other than voluntary contributions merits an in-depth and careful study of its ramifications on the UN ecosystem. Any decision to that effect must be consensus-based. Furthermore, the PBC should exercise its convening role more effectively. Three, it is important to set clear benchmarks and criteria for an exit strategy in the country under consideration. Peace building advocacy by the PBC needs to draw down when such criteria are met. India has always played a constructive and significant role in the context of peace building through its extensive development partnership with countries of the Global South. We continue to assist countries through bilateral and multilateral fora in post-conflict situations by providing substantial grants and soft loans. Even during the COVID-19 pandemic, India has stood in solidarity with the Global South by further strengthening existing developmental partnerships. Guided by the Kampala principles enunciated by Prime Minister Narendra Modi in July 2018 during his address to the Ugandan parliament, a total of 204 LOCs to the tune of more than US dollars 12 billion have been extended by India to 42 African countries. I would also like to take this opportunity to touch upon the India-UN Development Partnership Fund, which was established in 2017. In a short span of five years, the fund has developed a portfolio of 66 development projects in partnership with 51 developing countries, including 17 countries in Africa, focusing on South-owned, South-led, demand-driven, sustainable development projects. Since the beginning of the Ukraine conflict, in order to mitigate the adverse effects of the disruptions in the food and commodity supply chains, India has also been providing financial and food assistance to countries in need. Over the past three months alone, India has exported more than 1.8 million tons of wheat to countries such as Afghanistan, Myanmar, Sudan and Yemen. In our immediate neighborhood, we are continuing to help our good friend and neighbor Sri Lanka to ensure their food security by providing nearly US dollars 4 billion in food and financial assistance since the past few months. As Prime Minister Modi has said at the UN in the past, and I quote, let us pledge to reform the global multilateral system to enhance its re relevance, to improve its effectiveness, to make it the basis for a new type of human-centric globalization." Unquote. Going forward, Mr. President, India will continue to be a force multiplier for all peace-building efforts, 
driven very much by this human-centric approach. Thank you.